any form of exercise is going to improve your longevity. However, not all exercise is equal in terms of how important it is to slow down aging and improve your quality of life. In this video, I'm going to give you the top 5 exercises I think you should do for longevity. I'm going to cover the entire body, so it's going to be useful for everyone. Make sure you watch until the end because the fifth exercise is especially interesting. Number one is sprinting. With age, we lose both cardiovascular fitness and muscle strength. Both low cardio and muscle are risk factors for all cause mortality and heart disease. Interestingly, sprinting is one of the best forms of exercise to counteract that. With age, you see a disproportionately greater loss of type 2 muscle fibers, also known as fast twitch muscle fibers. These are the fibers you use to sprint, jump and lift something heavy. If you look at an elderly person, then their movements are very slow, they're not able to move fast anymore, and that's because of the loss of fast twitch muscle fibers. This is also a big risk factor for falls. If you're slow, then you won't be able to catch yourself or grab a hold of something when you fall. Falling is the leading cause of accidental deaths among people over the age of 80. Most people stop sprinting or lifting something heavy after high school, which is why they also age much faster. The elderly men who do strength training have been seen to have a very similar amount of type 2 fibers as young individuals, whereas this is not the case with older people who are only doing endurance training or no exercise. Master athletes 40 to 85 years of age who continue doing sprint training have been seen to experience an age-related decrease in their 60 meter sprint speed, but their muscle fiber composition stays the same. Just doing cardio and low intensity exercise isn't enough. You need to do things fast to recruit those fast twitch muscle fibers. Now, any form of resistance training can typically increase fast twitch muscle fibers, but the problem is that you can also be slow with lifting weights. That's why you still need dedicated training for speed and explosiveness. Sprinting has also been seen to increase testosterone and growth hormone levels, which both decline with age. So how should you do it? Doing some form of HIIT intervals is effective for stimulating fast twitch muscle fibers and increasing your cardiorespiratory fitness. However, for maximum effectiveness for increasing your fast twitch muscle fibers, you need dedicated sprint training, not just trying to get tired. So instead of doing short rest periods between your sprints, it's better for speed development to rest as long as you need to, and then run as fast as possible for a shorter distance. And that's how you'll focus on speed development the most. At least once a week, you should do some sprint training for 60 to 100 meters. Repeat that for about 5 to 8 rounds and rest as long as you need to between the sets. Number 2 is pull-ups. Next, I want to introduce an upper body movement to keep things in balance. Pull-ups are probably one of the single most important upper body exercises you could do. They're so versatile and target so many muscles. Pull-ups improve your back muscles, arms, forearms, grip, while also improving shoulder mobility and decompressing the spine. If pull-ups were your only pulling exercise, then you can pretty much cover most of the benefits you could gain from pulling exercises. Every year for my birthday, I'm going to try to do the equivalent amount of pull-ups as my age. Last year I did 29 for my 29th birthday and this year I'm going for 30 and we'll see how long I'll be able to continue this streak. My goal is to try to do at least 10 pull-ups when I'm in my 70s and 80s. Number 3 is back squats. Resistance training also trains fast twitch muscle fibers but lifting weights is more effective for bone density and muscle mass which are also critical for longevity. The reason I chose back squats is because they're great for increasing bone density in your femur bones. Hip fractures are life-threatening for elderly people and you want your bone density to be above normal already in your youth, because it's much harder to increase your bone density when you're old. Weight-bearing exercise is the most effective way to increase bone density, and doing deep barbell back squats targets specifically the femur bones, your spine, and your knees in terms of increasing bone density. I've been lifting weights for over 12 years, and my bone density is several standard deviations above normal for my age group. For example, the bone density of my spine is 3 standard deviations above normal. And that's only because I've been lifting weights for so long. But the reason I added back squats into this list isn't because of the idea of increasing your barbell back squat number and trying to lift as much weight as possible. The reason I added it into this list is because of the mobility aspect. Instead of trying to lift as much weight as possible, the goal with this exercise, in my opinion, should be to practice good form and go as deep as you can without feeling any discomfort. This way, you're increasing the bone density in your femur bones, your knees and your spine the most. So the goal shouldn't be to lift as much weight, the goal should be to do it as a mobility exercise, while still overloading the joints and the bones. Number 4 is Zone 2 Cardio. I've talked a lot about the benefits of VO2 max and Zone 2 Cardio before, and sprinting can certainly improve your VO2 max if you do longer intervals lasting up to 4 minutes. However, there's also a lot of value to doing low heart rate training, which is called Zone 2, instead of just doing high intensity exercises. 
Zone 2 is a heart rate zone of 60 to 70% of your maximum heart rate, and it's where you burn the most amount of fat. The benefits of this for longevity are related to metabolic flexibility, increased mitochondrial biogenesis, and better fat metabolism. With age, these things all go down, and by doing some zone 2 cardio, you're improving your cardiorespiratory fitness as well. You can do zone 2 in virtually any way. You can jog, you can cycle, hike, swim, play sports, etc. The key is to just stay in that 60 to 70% of your max heart rate, which is in the low 100s for most people. It is important to do strength and speed work when you get older because you lose more strength and speed as you get older, but increasing your aerobic base and increasing your cardiorespiratory fitness is also very essential to slowing down your heart aging. Before I continue, I want to briefly mention to you about one of my favorite longevity gadgets, which is the Bond Charge Infrared Sauna Blanket. It's a cheaper and more convenient way to take the sauna anywhere at any time. I've talked a lot about the benefits of regular sauna use. I believe taking a sauna regularly is the second best thing for your longevity after exercise. In fact, the sauna mimics a lot of the health benefits of exercise. The sauna is also effective for excreting heavy metals and other chemicals we're exposed to on a daily basis. The Bond Charge Infrared Blanket is made of pure leather and it's low in EMF. It's got a rating of 4.9 out of 5 based on 176 reviews, which is crazy. But I'm not surprised because I'm using the blanket almost every day and it gets the same job done as a regular sauna. Plus, it's easy to clean and you can store it under your bed. Alright, back to the video. And the last exercise is Hindu push-ups. To counteract sitting and the forward position, the Hindu push-up is also effective for strengthening upper body pushing muscles. If you've done yoga, then you know the downward dog and sun salutation exercise. The Hindu push-up is a combination of that done for reps. You start from the downward dog position and then dive into a sun salutation to stretch and extend the back. In the downward dog position, you're also opening up the shoulders and upper neck. With age, you become more hunched over because of loss of muscle and mobility. The Hindu push-up is one of the best exercises for counteracting that. If you do it for several reps, you're also getting a good workout for the chest, shoulders and triceps. If you're already strong and advanced, you can make it harder by lifting up one of your legs, dropping your elbows to the ground and doing a push-up like that which is called the tiger push-up, or just pause at every part of the rep for a few seconds to increase the tension. Again, it doesn't matter how many reps you can do, but how well you do them. To sum it up, I included only the top 5 exercises best for longevity. Longevity isn't about specialization like a powerlifter or a marathon runner. You need to kind of cover all the bases of strength, mobility, endurance, flexibility, and also speed. Of course, you shouldn't limit yourself to only these five exercises. You should do more exercises that introduce variety and also improve your athleticism. If you want to learn about my evidence-based workout routine, then check out this video. Other than that, thanks for watching this video. Make sure you click a like and subscribe for future videos about living longer and staying healthier. My name is Seem, stay optimized, stay empowered.